this is another movement using the the ISO rack and the ISO rack attachment. This movement here, it's really more a muscle activation movement that I've taken away from uh, Eric Serrano, something that he had me do in his office. There's my right shoulder is basically trashed. I don't want to get into the history of that, but it needs replaced. But a lot of the issues with it in regards to degeneration and everything else is the stabilization. If you have um, joint damage, you have to be able to stabilize first. Then after you can stabilize, you need to be able to absorb force. Then you need to be able to produce force. So a lot of the reason for me wanting to have this ISO attachment built onto our collegiate rack has a lot to do with that in regards to strength, strength production, and as far as rehab as well. So what I'm going to show you here is something that I took from Eric, which was in regards to my shoulder and getting it through a greater range of motion. When I force a range of motion with, with my shoulder, because the, it is bone on bone, it is degenerated, it is arthroarthritis, so we're not talking about muscle, and we're not talking about tendon, we're talking about straight joint. So force is a major issue. I don't want to have a lot of weight on the joint, especially through a full range of motion. But I do want to work the full range of motion to be able to maintain as much joint integrity as I possibly can. So what Eric had me do in the office was to actually drive my elbow down into a table and then lift my arm up as high as I could. The harder I would drive down, the more my lats would activate, which your lats do play a role in the stabilization of the shoulder. So I kind of rigged that up to do the same type of thing with a, um, a reverse grip bar. I tend to do better with a reverse grip on the shoulder than I do a uh, neutral or a prone grip. And what I'm going to show you here is pretty much the first exercise I'll do with any of the shoulder training I do just to get the range of motion extended a little bit and to get the, the lats fired and ready to be able to um, absorb force and to I'm not really worried about producing force because I got a lot of isometric, a lot of stabilization work that has to be done within the shoulder region before I can get into any producing of force. So firstly will be, and I do use the rack to drive into like you would a Smith machine, but there's still this balance from side to side. <clears throat> to be able to just do one rep and what would be a cage press or a stripping the rack press, I can get right about there is where my range of motion would be. And if I was to do the movement alone, that's where it would end up. I would start lower. But to take what I was talking about and what Eric showed me as far as the stabilization and contraction of the lats to be able to stabilize the shoulder, if I first pull down on the bar as hard as I can, as hard as I possibly can for uh, close to a 10 count and then push up, I'll be able to get a greater range of motion. And as you can see, I can get a much larger range of motion by activating the lats first. It's a little, that's not to say that I'm going to load this up and do full repetitions because all we're really worried about with this is to be able to get the activation, to be able to extend the range of motion, to extend the health and longevity of the joint. So I will not add any weight to this. If I do this movement for weight, it will stay in the shorter range of motion. My goal with this at this time is to be able to get the range of motion all the way up. And then the second step after that is to be able to do the same thing without having to rely on the uh, post to press up, but just to have it be a free press so there is full stabilization across the board.